And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm actually coming to you this time to show you a tutorial on how to do something, um, as opposed to me just playing around with stuff. Um, I have, for a while, since I've got my new laptop, I have not hooked up my <coughs> uh, USB to MIDI crossover cable to it, so I don't know how it's going to work. So I felt like this would be a good big time to record myself mid-process, just hooking the hardware up and showing you uh, what will happen. So if you've never used a MIDI, a USB to MIDI cable, or if you're, if you're one of those people who wants to use a piano, um, or, you know, something you have available, like a MIDI, a MIDI keyboard, um, to help with, like, lay down string lines or beat production, um, this might be very useful. Um, to my left, I have my Casio CTK-533. That's a old Casio keyboard, but it's, um, Something I've used for a long time. You can hear the pop. There it goes. And then we've got, you know, the wonderful polyphonic MIDI, MIDI tones of this beast. Yes. Yes, wonderful. Um, what you're going to want to do first, uh, if you've got a USB to MIDI cable and you have a MIDI capable keyboard, is that the two cables from the USB to MIDI, um, well, the device itself you need to plug in the back of your keyboard. There'll be a MIDI out port and a MIDI in port, and each of those cable ends should be already labeled <coughs> on the device itself and on the keyboard. Um, if not, um, plug them in one way, and if they don't work, plug them in the other way, and they should work. Um, that's pretty much the easy way to say that. Once you have that set up, plug this beast into your USB port. And Windows 8 and newer versions of Windows will do the installation for us automatically. Um, so especially if you have an internet connection, it will allow you to, or it will uh, automatically download the driver for you. So let's see how long this takes. And the USB Uno MIDI interface. I got this one from Guitar Center several years ago for $29.99 and has served me fairly well. Uh, I've never really had any problems with it. <coughs> Unless it's uh, usually software related. Alright, now let's um, load in something that everybody has. Let's do Fruity Keys. Where are Fruity Keys? Fruity Keys? Fruity Keys? You think that I would find it because it's in order? Alright, now, oh, as we know, like with the normal keyboard, you can you can play this with like, your keyboard keyboard um, using like Z through your question mark and Q through the bracket and then on the keys above them are the black keys um, so these are your main well that's just being played straight on my laptop keyboard which um, you can do it, it just becomes kind of annoying but you, for the basis of real playing, you don't want to actually have to do that if you can keep from it. Now, by all means, I'm not a real good player, um, but I can tell you that um, having the keyboard and playing with one makes it easier to find things that you're going to like versus hunt, playing hunt and peck on your keyboard. Um, so to get us to recognize MIDI, um, now this is going to be where I have to try to remember how to do this, and I'm not going to try and Google it. Um, we're going to go to MIDI settings, and we're going to go to MIDI interface device, uh, loop be internal. So now that I have my UNO set up, um, we'll set send master sync here, and then not yet, okay. And we're going to enable this controller as a generic controller. Um, like stuff like I have a launch pad, and then there are specific setups for each uh, kind of device if it's in this list. But since mine is just a generic controller, we're just going with generic controller. And there you go. Um, you'll hear the delay. Like I hit over here, I'll go like a half second. Not even a half second, that's a couple hundred milliseconds. Um, that might be. That might be changeable, um, and you can also change mod settings, which are really cool, um, but I would suggest leaving this alone for the most part. Uh, if your device doesn't show up once you've installed it, you can rescan, which is what I would have had to have done if I had Fruity Loops open before I installed it. It's like, it's like a fonts and Illustrator when you're doing graphic design work. If you install a font while the program's opening, you've got to reload the program or rescan re your fonts. Same thing.
just different. Um, but that's pretty much it. Now what you're going to probably want to do is turn your volume on your keyboard all the way down. You shouldn't have to mess with any of the MIDI output settings on a generic MIDI controller. Um, there are some you can play with normally, but that's generally not even needed. Um, so now, like, we can go through here and I can I play chords over here. Turn that bitch down. And there's a little bit of delay. Um, it's never going to be... It's never going to be super. So you might want to you might want to account for that. Let's see if we can find. Let's see here. Let's go to options, general settings. Let's see here if we can find a way to like maybe pull this buffer length down. If I pull the buffer length down, I wonder if that'll make that. That was a terrible idea. Okay, cool. Um, so that's where I guess this would be is adjusting our buffer length again. I haven't had to adjust this in a long time. Um, I'm trying to get everything here. And by the way, if you didn't also know, this is where you can set a lot of your weird general settings, um, which is kind of useful to know. And then I guess the last thing here before we um, depart, I will show you uh, not my great keyboard skills by any means, but like. So you wanted to set up a multi-link, um, multi-bar setup. Uh, we all know you can roll in piano, the piano roller, and like here is a full measure, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and so if you put another one here, this will be double the length. Okay, but if we want to show that on here, we can put this up to eight, and then we've got double the length. So if you record a piano line and you want to make it as long as your track is, you may have some playing to do. Um, because you can make these really long, but you'll get to a point where it's absurd to have to try to even look at it. Um, so I would suggest not doing that. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and then what we'll do is we can uh, we can arm recordings. Uh, audio in the playlist, automation score, well, let's do everything. We're going to arm recording, so the minute we touch anything, it's going to record. Turn this button on, we'll turn our metronome on, and turning this on, we'll wait for inputs to start playing for it to do it uh, before it'll start doing stuff. Um, blend recording here, like if I've already recorded something once, blend recording will record on top of it, so it'll give you... Though this is exactly like I explained that it's an overlay. It's if I record a C chord and then a D chord, it will replay the C and D chords at the exact same time. Um, Multi-link controllers. If I had multi-controllers set up, we'd be using that. We're not gonna do that. So with armed, with recording, arm turn on, and with metronome and keyboard piano playing, I could actually turn that off with the keyboard plugged in. I don't need to be able to play on my keyboard anymore. Um, but this will wait, and then so now if I play a chord over here, it'll go. And this is the other part that's tricky, is that you need to be able to turn this off too, because if you stop, it'll just automatically cut short. Well, kind of. It's if you stop playing, it'll trim the blank section. It should. Let's let's figure that out. I'll do this. I'll just do two. And okay, it didn't record. Why didn't you record? 
Oh, whoops, I forgot. I totally forgot about that. That's right, you've got to hit play, and now it'll wait. I forgot. Hmm. And then... Alright, now that I stopped, I'm going to do a full measure. I didn't... Why didn't you record? Hmm. We will come... <laughs> okay. There we go. It was the countdown. That's what it was. I uh, played two... Uh, I forgot about this too. The measured countdown will go for your entire length. Um, just to show that again, just because, uh, let's do, I'll do the snare. Okay, it didn't uh, do the countdown. There we go. And go. Oops, hold on. See? If you counted that out in your head while it was playing, that was an eight step, so. It was eight clicks before it actually started doing it. So that'll actually be adjusted based on how big your pattern is. That's interesting. I was not aware of that um, because I haven't done, not, done a lot of recording uh, recently. Um, but you can go in here. It does um, do a pretty good job. If you've got a velocity controller, like one that does really good velocity tone, like our velocity recordings, it'll record your how hard you push your keys to. Mine's kind of just like a since it's generic, it's not gonna it's not gonna do that for us. So you can pull those down, you can grab your notes after you record and stretch them out, put them right where you want them to the end of these. Or if you want it to sound a little more um like played, I guess you could say. Oops, what am I doing here? And you can just readjust everything uh, like normal once you get back in here and do it again. Um, I may show how to play with my MIDI stuff on Acid. I don't know. I don't. I, I do not like Acid's MIDI. Um, it's to me, it's absolutely aggravating. Um, but that's just me. That's why I prefer Fruity Loops for doing MIDI editing. Um, well, that's all I'm gonna do right now and show you guys. I just want to show you that hooking up a MIDI controller. Um, is actually really, really easy. For some people, it like, drives them insane. They spend hours looking it up on Google and how to do stuff. Um, as long as you've got the driver installed or it'll install automatically for you, and then everything should be fine. Um, that's, I mean, then it's just options, find, you know, and then let's do you know, options, uh, MIDI settings, find your, your, in, your internal thing here, make sure it's in there, uh, and then enable it. Uh, so if it's not enabled, it won't work. That's the biggest problem. That's the biggest deal. Learn to play with your recording settings if you're going to record. Um, keep a track on your buffer length uh, to minimize your delay between key presses and what you actually hear coming out of your computer. The, clo the closer your buffer is to zero, um, the less time the system has to think about it and render the sound for you. So, but you also minim you also maximize the possibility, as you heard, with when I dropped it all the way to zero, that it sounds like absolute computer garbled nonsense. Um, but that's me. Um, this is Watch This going out, and uh, happy producing and mixing, boys and girls. And I'll see you boys on the next time.